Welcome to another Zoom. I am so glad you're watching. You will enjoy this today. I'm just going to kind of transport myself to the location we are today. It's in Colorado because I love mountains, snow-capped mountains. It's one of my favorite places to be. And then my guest, when she gets tired of this particular area, she goes to England in her other home and enjoys that ambience. Uh, she is a well-known, best-selling author. This is her latest book. It is absolutely amazing. As soon as I read some of these books, you wouldn't even have to tell me. I can tell immediately, okay, this is an experienced writer. Uh, they really write well, and, it, and it's so readable. But my guest today is Sally Clarkson. Uh, <clears throat> she's a ministry leader, inspirational speaker, and she is a beloved author. I, I, at one place, I believe she and her husband, uh, Clay, right? Uh, uh, Sally, you can come on now with me. Okay, great. Uh, yes. It is so neat to have you in Colorado. What's the temp there right now? I think it's around 50. It's been oh. quite cold here the past few days. And we even had our first snow last week. Really? Yeah. So so do, are you are you in the area where you can see snow caps? Uh, oh, yes. It's I live at 7200 feet high. Uh -huh. And um, so I can see Pikes Peak when I meander out to the freeway. Wow. And, um, sometimes I can see it through the barren trees near my house. Now you have a home in Oxford, England. We have, we're renting a flat there, a home. It's a wonderful, it's a fairy house, but that's another story. <laughs> and and how does that feel in Colorado? And then all of a sudden you wake up in England. What does that feel like? Well, I love both places. I, um, three of my four children live in the United Kingdom and, um, my three grandchildren live there and wow. I have lived in Oxford before. So I adore living in Oxford. It's a walking city. Um, I have many friends there. I teach Bible studies there. So I love being in Oxford, but our family home is in Monument, um, Colorado, which is near Colorado Springs. Yeah. And uh, we absolutely love being here too. So we're, we're very grateful for our lives right now. It's interesting because I know the people watching think, oh, my goodness, that would be a dream to live like Sally lives. But <laughs> in reading your book, there was a time when you were at, at the point of you said between my husband and I, we were and, and our children, you had your children then six hundred dollars a month was coming in. So yeah. I'm, so when you're reading that, I'm, I'm thinking, isn't it interesting that if people when when they kind of view us now, right, could follow us back to when we began, they mm -hmm. would go, Oh, I see. We, so, we totally identify with every season of life. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, you, you were in the mil million selling books, weren't you? You and Clay? Mm -hmm. What what book was that? It was about marriage? Well, no, right? it's actually, well, all of our books together are over a million sold. And um, I don't even know there, we've written 27 books. And um, so wow. it, I don't even keep count. <laughs> now, now you, I am so proud of people that have a family and that family doesn't just take from the country, they give back to the country, but your children, I mean, you. I, I wrote it down, I, she has, uh, uh you have some that are that are uh musicians you have phds uh you have authors i mean and, and some what uh had their education at oxford right mm -hmm. i mean y y your your dna between you and clay <laughs> if, if you could transfer that well we'd have an educated World. Well, that's that's what we write about. Um, we we both became believers when we were in college. We had um, both grown up off and on in churches, but uh, when we became believers, it, uh, we really were captivated by the whole 
idea of discipleship and mentoring. Jesus was really our focus. And um, so as we saw him be a servant leader, we thought we need to be servant leaders to our children. And, um, you know, he lived with his disciples and he talked to him morning, noon and night. So we talked to our children morning, noon and night. And so thank the Lord, in spite of our many uh, flaws and difficulties, our children just loved what we loved, loved the Lord, and all of them are published authors and were kind of a words people. Um, no one would want us to do their accounting, but um, <laughs> we're happy to speak, to teach, to do arts and music, and that's kind of what they've turned out to be. They, well, they, if, they if actually you, believed if, what we did in the home. <laughs> if any of our viewers go on Google, you'll see all of the layout of every book <laughs> it is just amazing. How do you, I mean, this particular book is, is your latest help. Mm -hmm. I'm drowning. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. quite a, quite a title, but how did this subject inspire you? Well, I was actually sitting on my porch. It was very soon after the beginning of COVID. I had no idea it was going to last so long. Um, and so I was sitting on my, my porch front porch. I have four rocking chairs out on my front porch. And I was praying and I thought, oh my goodness, um, we had another book coming out then, so, but we had to cancel all the conferences. We were going to do four conferences over the United States. Um, my children all were having difficulties, losing jobs. Um, I had four friends who were in four stage cancer, you know, just so many things happening. And as I was sitting there, uh, because I get a lot of letters, I have a podcast and I get a lot of letters from people and I just was astounded at how difficult their lives were and um, how much trouble they were having. And I thought, you know, as I look back, I'm 68. And as I look back on my life, I thought I have lived through so many seasons and some of them seemed overwhelming and isolated and lonely, but I can look back now and see that God was preparing me to know him better, to have more compassion on people's difficulties to, to be more humble and say, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. And so I thought, I want to write a book that will companion and encourage and come alongside these precious people who are writing me every day saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. And I wanted to say, I totally understand all the journey that you have been through. I've been through it too, but let me help you as you walk through it, because God adores you, he is with you, and he will companion you. So it came from the time and from all the letters I was getting and just realizing that in my own life, God had been so faithful. Wow. Uh, your first chapter tells that subject, does God not care? Mm -hmm. I think have that you, have you ever been in that condition where you you go, does he care? I know, of course I have. And the funny thing is, I was so immature. I, I look back and think, I didn't know that I was a toddler when I became a believer. I thought I was so impressed with myself, you know. <laughs> I thought, I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything, I'm yours, God. And then my life started falling apart. And um, probably so many areas that people deal with all the time. But I feel like, you know, scripture is very clear that this is a fallen world. This is not heaven yet. And um, there are many, many difficulties in this world. And um, I just didn't understand what a fallen world meant. And I didn't understand what it meant to say, God, I will be your warrior. I will walk with you. I will bring light to darkness. And so I think the first thing I had to realize is that there is sadness. There is brokenness. There is hurt and difficulty and doubt. And I looked at the Psalms and I thought, oh my goodness, the Psalms are filled with lament. Um, and it's okay to look at this very dark, difficult world, difficult people, and to say, God, this really makes me sad. But God trusted me with a lot of difficulties because he knew that my heart was committed to learning and growing. And so I did shake my fist at God many times and say, what in the world are you doing? But as I look back now, I feel like his loving arms were taking all the things out of my hands that I thought I needed. Um, he was teaching me, growing me, strengthening my spiritual and intellectual muscles. Wow. And so I, I felt like I just wanted to pass on some of what I'd learned 
to all of these precious ones who felt so lonely and isolated and were having the same kind of doubts. Chapter four, broken expectations. Mm -hmm. How many of those have you had? <laughs> well, too many to count, I think. Even uh, now, I just, um, I was living in Oxford. We are working with a church there and we have a visa, which is impossible to come by. And I had to fly home to America to have a hip replacement. Now, that was not my expectation. <laughs> and then I had a, 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 a cancer in my um, face that I had to have surgically removed twice. Um, you know, we all. And you said you uh, just had hip surgery. I had the hip surgery and then I just had cancer surgery last week. <laughs> um, and so we all are living in this broken place. And um, but now, I, you know, I've learned so many wonderful things. And I've realized that in every situation, God has met me and eventually shown me what what was in that place for me at that moment and um so anyway yes i've definitely had disappointed expectations how, how and i have you, a lot of expectations <laughs> how do you uh do chapter after chapter and you yourself are experiencing what you just talked about how do you push through that um you know i think that I, we, um, we have this discipleship tool that we use with people. And one of the ways that we taught our children is 24 family ways. We teach our children 24 values from scripture. And one of the values was, um, I learned to be joyful, even when I felt like complaining. And, um, we, we go through scripture and talk about what does it look like to find real joy? What does it look like to practice, you know, exercise that muscle of learning to be content? And um, so I think after all these years, there is just a habitual, Lord, you are so good and I love you so much. And I'm gonna enter this day with a trust in you and understand that there are seasons that we have difficulties. This is the fallen place, but I'm gonna be with you in the beautiful um, eternal place someday. And this is my day to glorify you. Did you always share what you were going through with your children? Uh, it depended, you know, I, I realized that our children were going to have to go through difficulties in their fallen and broken world. And so instead of trying to give them a perfect life, we walked with them through the difficulties. And uh, we loved them, we provided for them, we made our home the best place to be, but we realized that they were watching us so that they would have a model for how they would face their own difficulties when they grew up. And so we all walked through the difficulties together and uh, we didn't we you know if, if it was too much for a little one to handle we didn't talk about it but as our children grew older we trusted them with the burdens of life and said you know this is the broken place but this is where i believe that you're going to tell a story that's going to bring light and beauty and goodness into this darkness when god called you as a bible teacher and author and speaker and all of the amazing areas of your life mm -hmm. and you're doing 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 because you obviously have to have a schedule that you adhere to or you could not right. accomplish what you do but i was reading where you were at a bible study bible teacher mm -hmm. and felt excited about how it went and all of the results and you call clay and he said i don't know what happened there but one of your individuals in the bible study called me and just ripped on you <laughs> and and it was like you said you must have the name wrong because that was a close friend because mm -hmm. you felt you really had a bond mm -hmm. and he says no that's the name so i mean how does that hit you you're 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 high in the lord you're doing what he asked you to do you're you're doing what most people can't do with with you know bible teaching and then the exposition that you have and the way you deliver it 
and you can do that, and then you have somebody that just comes at you, and you and and the, and the the comment that the person made to Clay is, "Tell her not to ever contact me again," and it's like, mm -hmm. what? How do you do? How do you deal with that? How do you how do you go forward from that? You know, it was terrible. It was awful. I think that one of my biggest shocks in ministry and just in life is the disappointment with fellow believers, because uh, again, I was young, I was learning. Um, I didn't realize that that was a her problem. In other words, you know, I thought, what have I done? What did I do? Did I say something wrong? But um, I, I look now at culture and I realize that there are many people from their own context who have been broken, yeah. who are mentally ill, who have emotional problems. And before I even, I've, I've told my children that when you stand up in front of people, you become an immediate target. Well, I had to learn that. And um, what, you know, we talk in the book about ERPs, irrational people. <laughs> and um, we eventually got to the place where we said, I've been ERPed again, or that person's an ERP. And we knew what we meant because God came to fallen people, yes, not to perfect people. But I just expected that if I told the truth, or if I felt like God wanted me to love people, that everyone else would too, who called on his name. But um, one of the things I had to realize is that God did not want me to take on the vitriol, the hate, the cynicism that other people carried in their lives. And if they needed to accuse me of things, um, if, if I took that on, and you know, I, I remember a couple of times, because that's happened to me more than once, but I would rehearse, you know, what they said to me and how wrong it was and how I was the, I was in the right and how, you know, and that just poisoned my heart. I realized that to carry any kind of cynicism, criticism, hatefulness was just ruining me. And it was a really, really hard lesson to learn. Um, it took me a while to learn the lessons of does, what it actually looks like. Does that keep you from, from getting close to people? You know, I am um, more cautious about entrusting my life to everyone in the world. But um, it's a funny thing, but I will have to say that by mentoring and discipling our children, we have this built-in support system. We are all so close. We talk every day. We, um, you know, so if you can cultivate faithful people in the inner circle of your life um, and be faithful to them, uh, have people that, you know, if you make a mistake, they're not going to criticize you the rest of your life. You can be real. You can love one another. That keeps me from having as much need to please everyone out there. Because, you know, again, I told my kids, if you stand up in front of someone, they're going to be offended. Somebody's going to be offended and shoot at you. Did I just you... had to learn that. And that's what I want to help other people learn. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing anything wrong. Yeah. It might mean that someone is jealous, incomplete, and that they've hurt many people before they ever got to you. Well, that's a good, that's a good statement. It really <laughs> is. That's fresh. It's it's hard to learn, isn't it? It's hard to go through. <laughs> did did you suggest very strongly to your children a great education? How did that work? Well, actually, I homeschooled all of my children all the wow. way to college, and um, and we've written books about that too. And um, because when I saw Jesus being hands on about you know with his disciples, I thought I want to expose my children to the best authors, uh, the best musicians, the best thinkers, the best theologians. And so the only way I can do that is to be able to have them here where we can read profoundly every single day. And I can say, what do you think of that? You know, what would you like to do with your life? Take and our so, audience, take our audience down the journey of your children's accomplishments. Well, um, I mean, their education of, is what I'm primarily talking about. Okay. Uh, you mean what they're doing right now? Well, uh, where they were educated and what they left with. Okay. Well, um, our, my oldest daughter um, graduated eventually with her master's of theology from Oxford. She got her undergraduate degree there. And then she was awarded a full scholarship for her um, master's of theology degree there. 
Um, and she is an author of many books and she speaks and teaches and she's married to an, uh, a vicar in England. Um, oh my. And he also graduated from Oxford and they, they, they have three children and they both um, spend a lot of time with family and they also both teach and speak. And then um, Joel is my second child and he is finishing his PhD at St. Andrews. In PhD. PhD, uh-huh. And he is a composer. He does choral music. He's done film scoring in Hollywood. And he's also a, a writer and cares deeply about um, liturgy and theology and historical Christianity. And then the next child is my son, Nathan. And Nathan lives in New York City with his wife. And he is a film producer. He's written multiple books. He's an actor. And um, he just really cares deeply about producing stories through movies that will bring light to the world. And so he now you, you, you say in the book, Nathan was a full job. Nathan was my artist child. He was ADHD, ODD, OCD. Oh my goodness. And now yeah. I look back and think, oh, he was brilliant. He was a debater. You know, he argued, he, um, but he, he really is just driven. And I just needed to understand that when he was in my home. <laughs> um, did you know, did you know when you were teaching homeschooling uh -huh. that my goodness, God has given me gifted, uh, not, not only with, with, the mind, but so many areas. Did you? That was part of our recognize philosophy. that. That was our philosophy that all people made in the image of God um, are called to be excellent within the confines of their own personality. And so we said, God is excellent. There is excellence just waiting to be taken out in our children's hearts and minds. And so we we tried to draw out from each of them and each of their individual unique personalities. Um, things that we thought would they would excel in and so we supported them sent them to training did different things so that they could each find a place that they could thrive in the world so yeah that was a part of our philosophy of discipleship and mentoring as well as of education and you know when it says in scripture to worship God with your mind um, you know with all your heart soul mind and strength we thought okay we are going to build children who have strong muscle in their mind so we had every night we had dinner together and we discussed great ideas and we read great books and, and we challenged them. And so we wanted to have a whole life discipleship, not just um, spiritual little truths. And so that was actually a part of our holistic philosophy was to cultivate our children in such a way that when they went into the world, they would carry a sense of story. What am I going to do in the world to bring God's kingdom to bear? The, the backstory of your life, did you and Clay ever go through a time when divorce may have been the answer? You know, um, we both, we were, uh, we had a lot of difficulties. We are very different people um, and we were very immature when we got married, but we, talked a long time before we got married that divorce would never be an option. Ooh. And, um, and so, yes, there were really dark times. Um, I mean, you know, we moved 19 times, seven times internationally. We had four children, three miscarriages, car wrecks, hospitalizations, bills, um, differing personalities. We were exhausted. <laughs> and I think that as I look back now, I mean, I'm so glad that I had made that commitment because our story is full of the redeeming love and richness of God. And I don't, I don't think I knew that marriage is really a journey. It's a long marathon of a story and you don't get to appreciate the whole thing until you keep going. In fact, in the book, you talk about some people make a five-year plan and yeah. you're talking about that's not good for marriage. It's no, not a five-year plan. It's a life plan. It's not good for marriage. It's not good for parenting. It's not good for friendship. Um, you know, Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And I thought, okay, I guess I have to model Jesus, you know. And, um, you know, even going back, I was thinking of a verse a minute ago when he said, um, Jesus, while being reviled, did not revile in return. 
but kept trusting himself to God who judges righteously. Yes. And one day I was just shaking my fist at God and I thought, you know, life isn't fair and I'm right and he's wrong. And um, the Lord really convicted me. He said, you know, what if one of the most important parts of your worship is to love clay unconditionally? What if that's all I ever called you to do? Is that what you would do? Even if no one knew what you were like in your house, if that's what I said, that'll please me. Would you do that? And um, I thought, oh, you mean even marriage is my service of worship to you? So I, I was having to learn all of these lessons throughout my whole life. I didn't know them to begin with. Wow. We have about two minutes left. And you, you write primarily to women. This book is, is obviously for women. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, by the way, and I, and I am fully a man. <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I, ho I hope my boys would enjoy it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to explain that today. Uh, but uh, in, a, in the two minutes that we have, talk to some lady that, that just needs, is Christ real? Yeah. yeah. Can I have what you have? Mm -hmm. Next two minutes. Okay. I think that um, when I was a little girl, my mom said, um, if God is for you, who can be against you? And she didn't know very much scripture. And I had, to, it took me many years before I came to Christ. But one of the things I have learned is that God loves you, whoever you are. He sees you. He sees the darkness you're experiencing. He is crying with tears for the things that make you feel sad. And um, I just wish that I could be with you to tell you how much he cares for the circumstances of your life, but there is a way forward and he wants to provide for you, to take care of you. Most of all, see if you can find anyone that you love or respect that might companion you. Take someone out for coffee and say, I really need a friend. Can you help me? And uh, know that God cares deeply, no matter how hard it is right now, he himself cares deeply for you. And Jesus is there with his arms wrapped around you. He came that we might have life and that you might have life right where you are. That relationship is so important. So important. Yeah. And I, I love your book and definitely recommend. I mean, it is so well done. I Thank mean, you so much. You have devotions in it. You have, you have places where people that need help you have uh it, it's it's like a coffee table book and it's a regular book but this book right here is the greatest of all mm. spend time today in the word of god at least two chapters it'll transform your life god bless you bye-bye mm -hmm.